So it was minus 18 last night. It's pretty cold. So hopefully we've taken a turn and with the sunshine, there's an incredible amount of heat in that sun. So hopefully it melts off all that bloody snow and brings that temperature back up to where we can actually get back out in the hives and do some work. So I was kind of hoping I would have had some patties on the colonies by now. Uh, just I just had half a moment, half a thought right off the start that uh, I, was, I was gonna be able to get this protein into the colony through just merely open feeding. And that would have worked if we didn't have this cold weather coming through. So it just kind of reinforces the fact on putting patties on these colonies just to provide those bees with the nutrition they need to be able to develop out this early nest. This is a very critical time of the year for our hives when they take their winter nest and they flip it into the spring bees. <clears throat> they need resources to be able to develop those bees. And if there isn't the pollen in the combs and if they're lacking the body fats on themselves, uh, they need to get it from somewhere. And that somewhere is typically through supplemental feeding. We're not trying to replace the pollen that coming into the colonies to uh, develop out this nest. We're just trying to supplement the hives with the, the bulk nutrients that they need just so they don't have to mine it from other resources. At any rate, so I'm going to be mixing some patties here. I'm just going to show you how the process and how I mix my patties up. I'm not going to show you the, the magic ingredient that uh, the chef has given me because I hold that in confidence, but I can show you everything else. Everything else is pretty much basic and standard and it's what I've been doing for the last 15 or 20 years. So the base ingredients, what I use in my patties is a soybean, uh, flour and a brewer's yeast. And this, the reason why I use uh, soybean flour is because the bees just love it. But it's, uh, it's protein profile is unbalanced a little bit, so I'm putting brewer's yeast in it, which the bees don't like. But uh, brewer's yeast has uh, vitamin B and uh, more of a balanced protein profile, and it's cheap. So the soybean flour and the brewer's yeast mixed together makes it for a really good off-the-shelf, cheap um, protein base for the patties. Uh, through the work with the chef, we've been tweaking it just to bring the true balance to that profile for the bees. But I hold that in confidence, so I can't share that. But just the soybean meal and the brewer's yeast tend to bring that um, protein profile up to as much of a balanced uh, a diet, diet as you can get. I'm also adding uh, sugar syrup. It's important that when you mix your patties that you don't mix with water because water will simply evaporate and your patty will dry out. So you want to mix it with syrup and the syrup will provide the consistency of that patty so it doesn't dry out as quickly uh, in your colonies. And I'm also adding oil, <clears throat> natural plant oils. Uh, and it's important for the fats, so you want to balance out the fats. We're focusing on fat content and not just the fat content, but the balanced um, nature of the fats that we provide to them in the oils. And I can't tell you what I'm using for the oils because that's uh, again in confidence with the chef but uh, what I used to use is canola oil and that gets you know there's some problems with the canola oil but uh, it does provide the fats and it does also give that patty a consistency just a little bit better texture to it and the bees are attracted to that so I used to use the canola oil uh, I see no reason why you can't use it now and yeah, I used to put honeybee healthy in mine too. I don't anymore because <clears throat> of all the ingredients I'm putting in uh, through the recipe with the chef. But I used to put um, the uh, honeybee healthy in just to um, make it more attractive to the bees to come up and consume that patty. Um, so that's basically, oh, and eggs. I used to put eggs in my uh, patty mix and the eggs add cholesterol and the eggs add fats and vitamins and minerals and all those good things about eggs. Um, so that's what I used to put in my patties as we, you know, just tried to target um, the diet of our bee, not trying to replace the pollen, 
that's coming in the colony, but just trying to complement it as it's coming in. And if we can provide these patties on the colonies to, to provide those bulk nutrients that the bees can then use to be able to develop out their nests, that's all I'm trying to do, just tr trying to um, provide the feed source which complements the diet that they naturally have coming into the colonies. And it works really well. And if there's nothing coming in, and this is all they have, they will mine that resource that's in the colony. They will extract what they need within their bodies and within the nest and maintain that development throughout these uh, um, non-foraging uh, weather events. So that's, that's the reason behind the patty. The, the entire purpose is just to provide you know, the nutrients they need. Uh, as we go, as there's a lot of research to try to uh, provide a true substitute to the pollen where the bees can in fact go through multiple generations on just supplement as their feed source. Uh, there's a, that research seems to be staggered and it seems just to, there's, there's something there that we don't understand. Uh, there's a lot of dynamics going on. There's a lot of dynamics going on in the environment around them and within the colony and just the dynamics between the flowers and the pollen and the, the flowers and the bees and the pollen and the way they process it within the colony. There's a tremendous amount of dynamics that we can't replicate in a mixer. So as a beekeeper who's trying to keep healthier hives, as a beekeeper that just wants to provide a healthy bee, to provide the nutrients to help these bees manage these unfortunate weather events, um, I'm looking for a cheap food su supplement that will help complement what's going on within that nest. And that's what this mixer does. And that's all I'm trying to attempt from that. Um, the chef has been just teasing me with all this information all winter. And it's just up my alley because he's, he's really focusing in, really narrowing in on the very specifics of a honeybee diet and what the bees need. And maybe some of those unanswered questions about uh, that factor X. And we've been experimenting a little bit. We've been seeing some results. It's quite exciting. And, you know, maybe someday we'll share that. But at the present time, we've got to make sure that uh, we're on the right track, right? That things are moving forward. And that's the big thing about uh, buying supplements for bees, is you've got to make sure that it's not simply snake oil. There's a lot of products out there right now that have a lot of claims. And I don't know. I, I simply don't know. And we just need more honest study behind it. And we need uh, to see actual uh, effectiveness within our hives to see if all these products are actually doing something. One of the biggest problems with beekeepers is when they uh, use these products, they put them on all the colonies and they don't do any test or trial to make sure that's actually working. And one of the reasons is because it takes a lot of time and effort to be able to track effectiveness and to, tr to attract a response from products we're putting on. It takes a lot of time and effort, and beekeepers don't have time for that. You know, we're beekeepers, we're not researchers. But at the same time as beekeepers, we gotta make sure that if we're gonna invest all this money into something to promote and enhance our hives, we gotta make sure it's working. And we gotta understand the conditions around our hives and around the product we're putting in and within the hives to be able to measure and figure out what the hell is going on. Two-part syrup. Ten pounds of soy flour. And ten pounds of brewer's yeast. This is where you can start putting your oils and the honeybee healthy in and the eggs. And this is where I 
at the magic. Compliments to the ship. That's just a little bit too sticky. I'm gonna to have to add a little bit of soy flour in there just to bring up the consistency a bit. But I don't want it too dry either, because then it's, you know, too firm. I want it nice and pliable so that we can put it on the colony and it can kind of kind of squish down into the frame a bit. There, that's a lot better. See, it's not sticky, nice and soft. It makes for a good patty. Now for the hard part. This is where a mortar mixer would be nice because you could just dump it out. But I'm not complaining, this does a beautiful job. <laughs> 